Fun with failure. Hello and welcome to the Neckbeard Experience. We've got three stores in Neckbeards. The first one is called Tabletop Beard, where he defends his board games with vigor. And the next story is Pally Beard, where the Neckbeard tries to strike up a romance inside the game of D&D. And the last story is about the Beard Overlord and his gang of minions. So sit back and enjoy and here we go. I finally saw one. I met a neckbeard in the wild, and looking back, I find the encounter both funny and cringy. So I thought I would share. I'm not a gamer girl, but my boyfriend is a gamer. Where we live, there's a really big store dedicated to tabletop games, comics, and manga. So on a beautiful Saturday morning, I venture to ye old comic book shop to buy my boyfriend the new edition of the super expensive new version of tabletop game. For his birthday, I find the game he wants with no trouble and I carry it around the store while I peek at the manga. I'm not a huge anime fan, but I do have certain ones I like, but nothing mainstream. Now, the manga is in the back near the gaming tables, so I'm back there minding my own business when I feel a presence watching me. I turn, and the most stereotypical neckbeard ever described in stories is less than a few feet away. Sadly, he didn't have a fedora, but he was wearing a black dirty t-shirt stained with orange dust Either it's Cheetos or Doritos, I'm not sure. The shirt he was wearing, it was a couple of sizes too small. And he had black cargo pants on, and they were somehow too baggy. I could see his stomach hanging out. I felt like gagging. He's making sighing noises while he's looking at manga, while giving me a side glance, like he wants me to engage him in conversation or something. I glance around and I realize that even though the store is busy, there were only like five girls present in the whole building. Two of the girls were employees behind the registers. One was at the Warhammer table, but she was a small planet herself. And the other was at the Pokemon table with her friends, with the parent nearby, and probably barely 14. I was the only one legal and worthy of his attentions female there. I moved to the other shelf only to have him follow me and finally say something. That game isn't very good, you know. Oh? I asked, not looking toward him, keeping my eyes on the manga. Yeah, I could show you some better ones if you like. He got into my space then. Then he physically tried to take the game from my hands. I pulled away before his stained orange fingers touched me or the box. No thank you. This is the one that my boyfriend wants for his birthday. I emphasized the word boyfriend. He blinked for a moment like deer in headlights before saying, No, really. I, I know a better game. Just give me that one. He reached for the game again. Don't touch me! I yelled. Usually I'm beta as heck, but this guy was really scaring me. Jay, what have I said about bothering customers? Snapped the blue-haired girl that worked there. I was just trying to be helpful. Jay said as he shuffled off back to his gaming table. I continued browsing a bit but I was aware that Jay never took his eyes off of me. When I went back to check out, the blue haired girl apologized to me. Apparently, Jay wanted that expensive game, but he didn't have the money for it. And he had been caught earlier by the owner that week, trying to dissuade other customers from buying it. He had one warning from that, and the other girl was already on the phone with the owner. Jay might end up getting banned for a week. Blue haired girl doubted that he would be banned forever, because when Jay had money, he would blow it all at the store. I did eventually go back to the store, and I had more encounters with Jay. I'll post that later. Thus, to be continued. I first met Pelly Beard at a club for writers at college, and while I didn't dislike him, I wouldn't have called him a friend. Though nothing really bad happened, until I got into D&D. I got a whole bunch of free D&D guides online, like the scumbag I am and made up a campaign as soon as some of the members of the club said they were interested in playing. Pallybeard, of course, jumped at the opportunity. At first, he was tame enough. Sure, he was massive, pale, he could probably be mistaken for a small moon, and he had a vaguely foul smell about him, but I normally don't judge. So we start playing, and everything is happy fun times. One of the other players, we'll just call her H, was a lesbian in real life, and was playing a lesbian ranger in game. Pallybeard chose to play a female dwarf paladin. As we play though, Pallybeard becomes more and more interested in role playing with H's character. Then the worst happens. He tries to start a romance. Examples of his conversation was as follows. Pallybeard, let me go first H. I will always protect you. 
Oh, it'll be okay, thanks. Such a creature as innocent of yourself should never be in harm's way. These conversations only got worse, culminating in a note left to H's character that went along these lines. I know I've made mistakes with you, but know that I have always loved you more than anything. I can only pray that in the afterlife, we will unite once more. I love you, H. Worse yet, he tried to read this note aloud at the gaming table. Thankfully, he showed me the note beforehand, and I, having tried my best not to vomit, instead made him pass it to each character that found the note, then tried to relay the information to H's character, who was illiterate. Aside from the horribly awkward romance that he forced into the game, he would also complain and get upset whenever his character was hit, or miss an attack. He would often scream out, I'll never do anything, or paladins are worthless. Then one day after a session, he gathered up his lumbering mass and shuffled over to H. He looked up at her with a smile akin to the Grinch after stealing Christmas and said, You know, if we get to the end of this adventure and my character has to die, she's going to run right up to yours and give her a huge kiss and run off to meet her fate. To which H simply flushed red with embarrassment, then quickly mumbled out, Oh, that's nice. Before running out of my apartment where we held the games, I have many more Pallybeard series, and they only get worse, including his development of several characters in his head, which he would slip into and out of the game for fun. Let me preface this by saying that I feel no guilt talking about this group, because they've made it a game to put down or insult anyone in their vicinity as cruelly as possible just for a cheap laugh, even each other. To me, that means they're fair game. I've met tons of neckbeards. They don't actively and vigorously insult strangers, so I don't mention them here. I was sitting in the chill out room. It was just me, two girls doing their own thing, and a whole table of the most awkward mixture of young and old beards imaginable. Some others passed in and out, but that was about it for the room. I'll list from the least to the worst severity. Within the beard den was Asian Beard. He was a nerdy young pup with a green Mario jacket, I think. I don't know video games that well, but it had an 8-bit mushroom on it. He's not obese by any stretch, but definitely building some chub. He had a very short stubble around his neck. Asian Beard wasn't that bad, save for when he was making fun of a guy for serving in the military directly to the dude's face. He won't make much of an entrance, but since this is a regular meetup, I hope to come back to listen in because these are some gems. There was a beard that actually kept his beard pretty clean and well groomed, so I'll call him Groombeard. He was rotund, very large, wore a green army jacket if I recall correctly, and he seemed to have generally good hygiene. Save for the ignorance spilling out of his mouth, I wouldn't have remembered him. He must have been in his late 20s, early 30s. For a larger dude, he wasn't half bad looking, but could have dressed better. He will also not be mentioned much. He was a follower, and just agreed with and tried to be one of the group. I'm hoping he comes back into the meetups too. I'm getting the feeling that he could get really beardy. Fingers crossed. There were a few other beards that I didn't remember, and weren't really important at the table. But then there was the worst, and definitely my favorite. He was Beard Overlord. I'll appropriately called him B.O. This guy was probably around 400 pounds. He wore socks and sandals and a gross dingy gray t-shirt. I assumed it was black at some point. He had thin blackish sweatpants that were an entirely different gray and suspenders, the high black kind that you expect to see on Dick Tracy detective movies. The dude had a centimeter long scruff beard that just didn't look good on a 400 pound balding ginger. The conversations, they were dominated by B.O. He was loudly telling everyone what the best kind of adult movie there was. Pre-choreographed was what he decided was the best. I crap you not. Also, he didn't like HD to be too HD because he didn't want to see the girl's butt pimples. This was not five feet away from kids in the other room, including a seven-year-old girl. He and his minions, they were shouting about male anatomy just to shock people. I might do that stuff, but not in a family setting, by the way. B.O., he wanted to know if there were any other kin wandering around. The group asked what other kin were, and one of the girls that were doing their own thing piped up and explained it. 
Poor girl. The next minute was Asian Beard and Grooming Beard grilling her on what type of other kin she was, and she repeatedly said that she was not another kin, and that no, she did not have a Tumblr account. I should call her a woman and not a girl. She was a married adult, homeowner, that actually was pretty nice. She was directly behind B.O., so he didn't ask anything. I mean, obviously, he was already an expert, and not because he physically could not turn around. When they got bored of shocking people about their conversations and other kin, Groombeard decided to make fun of the poor stoner kid trying to flirt with one of the girls. I mean, the dude was already awkward. But man, I felt so bad for him when B.O. and the rest sat there in silence and just burst out laughing when he noticed that they were looking at him. That was messed up. The girl that he was flirting with, she wasn't feeling it. And the stoner quickly found reasons to make their exits with red faces. After that, I stepped out to tell my wife what was going on. I was so excited to see a whole gang in the wild and in peak form. I wanted her to come and see. She declined, and I went back just in time to hear, If a girl can blink, then she's not really in a coma since that's voluntary movement, so she can consent. What? I sat next to the woman that had answered the other can question, and I watched her Google, Coma Patient Blinking and she quietly turned her phone to me to confirm that many coma patients will move, blink, or even occasionally set up. By this time, I realized that this woman was here to listen in to this crap show. To my surprise, my little pony was brought up. Bio at first said that he liked it, but when the other beards were ripping on it, he started making fun of it too just to cover up. I've seen all the episodes and all the movies because my wife thinks it's cute. The show's okay, not my taste at all but I know more about it than I should. I am definitely not a brawny. B.O. was talking about the difference between the old My Little Pony and the new show like he wrote his dissertation on it. I mean, dang, dude, he knew his ponies. Beyond that point, things wound down. After Asian Beard and the group stereotyped women the entire evening, he griped about how Asians were racially stereotyped on TV. B.O. teased him and made racist comments about Asians. After that, things started to calm down because the women listening in, they stopped making it a secret that they were listening in. Thank you for joining me for the Neckbeard Experience. I have to say, this is one of my favorite segments. I hope you enjoyed those stories. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. So if you have any Neckbeard stories you'd like to share, just send it to my email at funwithfailure at gmail.com. Or if you have any other funny stories you'd like to share, just send it my way. I'd love to share it. I'm going to start actively promoting Hellfreezer. He's an incredible narrator. He does a lot of similar things as I do. He's a wonderful inspiration. I'll leave a link to his channel down below and also a subscription button at the end of this video. I really recommend you check him out. Thank you for your time and until next time, it's not what you look like that makes you a neckbeard. It's the neckbeard in your heart.